Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run on the Harbinger Hawkman mission on the Hunter. It's a solo flawless. As you can see, I'm doing it on Tether. Night Stalker, sorry. Top 3 Tether. Uh, same weapons as the Warlock run, just about. Uh, 7th Seraph, uh, Yan 7, uh, Last Perdition, and Xenophage. Armor, obviously a little bit different, so I'm still running a War Main setup. Still kind of the same War Main mods. Uh, I'm Stompy's on, it's a given for the jumping bits. Um, but I'm going to be switching out once we're finished with the jumping bits. I'm going to be putting the worm husk on just for that added security of getting health back on dodges. So I've actually done a Titan run, which I'll put up tomorrow. I thought I'd get another run up tonight, just so that's two of them out the way and on. So once you, I believe, once you've completed this one time you get you get a quest marker on your screen same way we did with the whisper same as zero hour so you can access this mission from orbit so as soon as you come in just follow this route down through the walls of the trost land out, out in front of the out in front of the dam that you would run across normally to get to the the boss of the lake of shadows now i did notice a couple of different things doing this run and I'll explain them as we're going forward. The other thing I noticed is I got more progression for the quest, the Birds of Prey quest, per character. So I think I, I think I, I shot on the Titan run. I think I'm at 71. So you definitely do get more progression if you do it with more characters. Also got some tasty uh, Hawkman drops. I got I, I got a rangefinder one and I also got one with opening shots. So definitely if you're if you're a hand cannon aficionado. Uh, which I kind of would say I'd like to think I am, uh, it's definitely worth doing. Obviously, there's also the season, uh, the seasonal uh, triumphs and the seasonal uh, title. It's the word I couldn't think of there. <laughs> the seasonal title. Uh, so it's, it's worthwhile doing. So... Everything roughly the same. Now I'm going to change. I'm going to make sure I've got my void weapon on because we're not we're not running with the warlocks, so we don't have the the luxury of having big ass grenades. So same same kind of thing. I'm going to t take these uh, take these harbingers down. You see that once they go that white shield, that's it. They're going to go. Now you'll see on the left hand side you've got uh, hunt the emissaries. There's a void wizard which we've just seen. There's a solar captain and there's an arc shielded cabal. Once you get all of them down to half, then they, they will they will they'll disappear into their rooms, which is the next stage, and that's where you kill them, and and then you move on to the next area. Now another th thing, another interesting thing I didn't know when I done it with the warlock, which ever now I thought when I done the warlock, uh, I thought when I was doing the warlock. Uh, I just it, the 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 spawns in the next room were just random. They're not. It depends on which order you kill the emissaries in. So if it, I I personally I personally like this boss for the first boss. If you go and kill this boss first, I like him for the first boss. So I think I think that's the way it works. Uh, we're gonna find out because I haven't watched this run back since I've done it. So. You've got three, the, your three emissaries, once you take the emissaries down, they disappear into their rooms. Uh, you've got four snipers, but every time you send an emissary uh, away from this main area to the second phase of that fight, you're going to get a sniper spawn in, in the spot where the, in the, spot where the, 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 the door is for that emissary. So I think there's actually seven snipers all in. So we're going down here to get, this, get rid of this captain. And then we're going to go into the rooms and finish them off. So all three rooms are right now, practically right next to each other. You've got two facing each other and one to the left or right, depending on which of the rooms you take first. So, so you've got this high room, you've got the low room, and then the, the long platform to the right of where we are now is where the third room is. So the first, the first room, as you can see here, the first room, not too bad. Just go in, make sure... As I say, the hunter doesn't have the luxury of that, the big grenades. So I'm just going to change here because this is the solar captain. So uh, once you take these ads out, you're going to jump up this, these kind of platforms in here. Then you're going to have a, a void wizard, two void acolytes, taken acolytes, and then you, 
right next time you're going to have your champion. So I'm going to put that void grenade down just to assist me with the kill. And then I'm going to break the shield, which will break both of these guys' the shield. And then if I just get in that xenophage, just get in that xenophage kill, the explosion from the solar shield kills the acolyte that you don't kill. And there you go. That's that room done. So we're going to move on to the next room. We're just, you know, change back to Ark because no more. We're not really going to need the void until we get to the wizard. So I'm, I'm anticipating the Ark, the Ark Cabal. So as soon as you get into this room, uh, go up to the left and take these two guys out because you don't want them shooting you as you're trying to de deal damage to these ads down here. So a couple ads up on the, the platform, just take them, take them down from up here. Watch out because they do replicate, but nowhere near as bad as in the prophecy, or at least the pro way the prophecy used to be. Hopefully, I haven't tested that fix out, but hopefully, prophecy is not as manic now that they've fixed the spawns. So I've I've got ten heavy. That's why I'm just trying to do it a bit of damage. That's why I'm killing all these ads. See if I can drop some heavy. Uh, once you do that, as I say, I'm just trying to conserve some heavy. I wanted them to. Get his shield back up and just as little shots as possible to kill him. And there we go, he's dead. Uh, break this. I always break the war mines just in case there's any ads lying about. And you don't have to kill these ads, you can just bug out. But I'm, again, I'm, I'm just trying to get heavy. So once you do this, so we're left with the void, the void wizards. And that will be the one that's on its own down to the left. Don't run all the way up here because that's not the way to go. So I'm going to put my Void Pulse back on. I've just realised I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no, it's none of those. It's down here, you idiot. So once you get out here, uh, we're going to go down here to the right. As you can see, if you're up top, it's down to the right. I think I said to the left. Obviously not. And now we're going to be dealing with the, the Void Wizard. So I'll take these ads out, and then I'm going to fire a tether, which I can't remember how successful this, this tether was. It, it may not have been too bad. There we go, big tether. Grenade as well. And we just want to share that damage, kill as many of these ads as possible. As you can see, just break that, break that guy's shield. I'm going to just use, if I have to use some heavy, I will. We know that the wizard now has probably got, got her shield back. Breaker, and I'm just going to take her down with my primary, and there we go. No heavy, but all the emissaries are dead. So now we're going to make our way out of this area. So to do that, get down here, you'll get a mission marker. It is down to the left, but you will get a mission marker. Uh, sorry, uh, yep, is it is it left? No, it's obviously not because we're at the end of this room. It's it's over to the right. <laughs> Was it me that done this? <laughs> Have I ever been in here before? So, there's a even though we killed that cabal, he he does respawn. So he's going to be there when we get back here, and hopefully it's, a, it's sometimes it's a great way to get heavy. As you can see, there he is, uh, and he you do get if you bring up your if you bring up your ghost at that part, you will get see that there's a marker on the map. You can see that little white white. Uh, the little white uh, square just show you where to go so we killed them in the order in that room we killed the the taking the, the the captains first then yeah the captains first then the arc shield of cabal and then the the void wizard so that should be the order that we get these these ads in so i've went up top because i at this point, I didn't know that. I didn't know that the ads were based on how you killed them in that room. So now I'm just going to... I'm just going to take some of these ads down. Now, I started going up to this pillar because of the snipers in the Arc Shield of Cabal part. But it's actually not a bad way to take down all the ads. So, the minute I started getting hit and the captain was hiding, I decided to come out. One hit from the Xenophage with the explosion will kill the captain. So, now we'll just throw a grenade in the centre there. 
see how many that will take out and just finish off some of these ads want to isolate the captain if we can because the goblins will shield him so we'll take out some of these guys as you can see I've got I do have a one main cell if I need it decided just to go with it I've got enough heavy one hit from the Xeno will take this captain and then now we're going to go up because I think it was at this point uh, I started to realise the trend that I knew I knew the order of the ads I was going to get. So take out this uh, take out this uh, Ark Shield of Cabal. You'll also get one unstoppable. You'll get one unstoppable with the Ark Shield of uh, Cabal. You'll get two unstoppable with the Void Wizards. So. Well, now we're just looking for the other cabal. If you ever get into hassle in this room, just do this circle right round, the, right round the outer rim. Obviously, you'll get some hits from some of the ads, but it's just got the most cover. It allows you to get away from any kind of real sticky situations uh, and, st and stay safe. Stay safe as you can whilst being on the move. So we'll take this last sniper and then. And just keep on moving. Got this last unstoppable. Now, I got myself into a bit, not not really a big situation, but I got myself into a little bit of a situation there by not reloading. So, seven shots. And then finish them. Gets a little bit more heavy. And then straight back up into our, our little perch. Now... Ads can come underneath this part. So there's a couple of cracks in the floor where they can shoot up, but the wizards can also shoot through them. So, as you can see, this wizard just I managed to just get the hit, but she moved away. So now I'm going to switch to the position and just break the shields manually. As you, you can see, that could have went could have went a different way. Just managed to back away. They can't. They can't shoot through those cracks in the floor. But as you can see, as you as you witnessed there, you can actually take some some big damage. So now now that now that I've took those those two wizards, I'm going to tether here. Tether one of the bunch. They'll all walk into the tether and then finish them all with one xenophase shot and then move. You do not want to be kind of going toe to toe with one of these overload, one of these unstoppables. So we're going to make it round here. There's going to be another wave because two two wave of those thrall come. So got some heavy there. So I'll just burn this last shot. Reload. I've got mo you know, I've got plenty of time to get away from the the unstoppables. But again, this route going round round the outside it's, it is it's. It's really good because there is enough cover that the ads, even if they're shooting at you, you're, it's, it's uneven ground for a kickoff. So, uh, if the ads are shooting at you, they, they, they can't always hit you. I, I was just watching where that, what happened with that unstoppable. I've always had a problem with that when you stop an unstoppable, they just turn side on and, and the, you can't hit them. Be careful, as you can see here, I've got, again, not a sticky situation, but. When you dodge, make sure you've got your heavy out so that you utilize the the reload. So that's one 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 of the cabal ready to be stopped. So I, as you might have seen by by now, the, the same tactics that we were using with the as you can see I messed up. I I, I changed weapon. I'm not going to be able to get this this uh, cabal finishable. Make sure you've always got your heavy out when you reload, when you dodge. Uh, it's it's the run isn't that much different from the warlock run, a little bit longer. But as I say, that a lot of that is is due to the abilities on the on the warlock. But I think it shows it's, it's actually not not that much more difficult on any of the characters. You just have to utilize their strengths and as you can see I've got more paracausal feathers and now we're heading towards kind of the last bit before the boss the jumping puzzle and, and the boss the boss kind of plays out 
similar to to how we done it on the Warlock, except the Warlock obviously has has a a, a one hit kind of a one hit bang super, you know. Uh, I, I think I was doing this on my Titan, and when I got to that point, because I was just I was in a party with some people, so I was talking at the same time, and I just lost focus for a second and thought that <laughs> thought that was one of the blights, and I was standing shooting it. <laughs> Just lost focus just for a second because I was talking to some friends. Uh, again, just make your way through here. We're not going to need the arc weapon anymore, so we're going to keep the blind position on. Blind position? Last position. Blind position. That was a Destiny 1 weapon, right? Blind position, was that? Was that Trials Pulse Rifle? Might have been. I also made the same mistake on the Hunter Titan as I did on the Warlock. Uh, I went the wrong way there. At least I remembered on the Hunter. Hunter Love. So when we get to the boss, we're going to be utilising the, the Tether. We're going to use the Tether to do big damage uh, during those moments. And then we'll just whittle down the adds. Uh, nothing too heroic or crazy. We're still going to be using the two rocks at the entrance as we're cover points. I, I, I'm not saying I found it more difficult on, on the Hunter. I just... Yeah, I I really feel like the Warlock has overtaken every other character. Uh, one minute it was the strongest in PvP, now it's the strongest in PvE. Just thanks to ever since uh, ever since Oppressive Darkness was a thing, I think it really shone a spotlight on the Warlock's uh, Void Grenade. We all knew it was good, but I mean, it's just. It's really good, and you couple that with the controversy or, or uh, the Warlock helmet that has completely disappeared from my mind. Nezarek Sin, there we go. Uh, you couple it with those if you're using void weapons, and, and it's just grenades and melees and, well, with controversy it's grenades, but with uh, Nezarek it's everything for days, just constantly getting that stuff back. So... I, I, I'm, as as an ex-Titan main, I was, uh, Titan was the very first character I created in Destiny. I love the Titan. Uh, and I know some people are going to say, yeah, but Stasis, it's really good for Stasis. Uh, it's got a good shoulder charge. Titans have always had a good shoulder charge. It's neutral game, I think, for PvE is probably about as weak as it's ever been. You know? Titans, now, if you've got a Titan in your team... It's, right, can you go bubble? <laughs> that That's it. It's it's where the Warlock was with Well of Radiance at one point. But I suppose every kind of character has to do its do its, uh, its time uh, as, as the... as the... everybody's third favourite character. <laughs> that's the best way I can put it. So, anyway, enough of my rambling. As you can see, I'm trying to whittle this uh, champion down in my primary because I've got 15 heavy. I, w I know I'm going to get a brick, at least a brick. So I'm wanting to conserve as much heavy ammo as I can. And hopefully this brick's a good brick. And, and it takes me up to a decent uh, amount of heavy. Because without the super... Now, I know that the, the, the Hunter's uh, Tether is, uh, is really good. And we get 30%. Uh, additional damage on top of it uh, but it's, it's the warlocks as you can see there I got I got 13 rounds so I'm, I'm at full the warlock super is just you know really good for this so change now to worm husk and the way I say it just 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 so that you guys if you are if you are going to use that strategy make sure the boots and the helm that you change to have the same uh, stuff on if that's what you want to use make sure that it's got the same mods and affinity and all that type of stuff as the exotics you're taking off and vice versa make sure the exotics are the same uh, you don't you don't want to be changing and be thinking why am I not dropping heavy oh, I forgot to put that machine gun f ammo finder on my helm so all we want to do here as you can see I've got my dodge you do take a bit of heat here. Uh, I've got invisibility. I've got decent recovery, so you'll see my recovery's my recovery's not too bad. So 
if I can go in Fez and get to one of the rocks he's not shooting at, because you can lead him, you can, you can, you can lead him. You don't. It's not a case of dodging his fire, as much as you can get him to fire at a rock and attack from the other side. So he's going to go now. And now we've got the waves of uh, void shielded acolytes and the two, the two knights, the two solar shielded knights. So what I'm going to try and do, probably wasted a little bit more time uh, than I wanted to here. But what I'm going to try and do is take as many of these goblins as I can. Because, as you can see there, the goblins pose a massive problem. They, they're they probably more annoying uh, than the solar shielded captains. Because I, th I think it was on this run. Cause, because I'd done the Titan run, the Hunter run back to back. I'm forgetting which run was, was which, to be fair. But it, it may have been this one. It may have been on both of them, to be fair. Uh, the, this left hand... Yeah, it was this one. This left hand captain just was... You can see there, it's, it's, he's, he's out of my eye, eye line. I cannot shoot that goblin. And any time I aimed, I didn't even have to shoot any time I aimed at an ad. It seemed like he was, like, shielding them. So I, I ended up Hollywooding a grenade right in there and trying to deal with them. Uh, now we're just looking for this. There's the knight. But the minute I aim at him, it's just... I don't know if that's... Uh, I suppose it is kind of smart AI, but it's it's if it's I don't know about smart, bloody annoying that anytime you aim at an ad, they're like, oh, I'm out, you know. So just to kind of, and you can get bogged down here. Don't get me wrong, you can get bogged down with the respawns if you can't take the captains down. The respawns can just they can really get uh, really annoying. Especially because uh, to push up, you can see those eyes just constantly being regenerated up there, but I can't actually shoot the ad. Because to, to actually get a good bead on the ad, I managed to get up here, but even then you're just taking so much fire. Now luckily, I think when I hit that shot, you see just another spawn of ads. I've never been... The two sets of ads that we've had in the game that I cannot just not a massive fan of are the Scorn and the Taken. I've never been a fan of either because I'm not a fan of any ad uh, that can still do damage to you while shielding. Now, you might say the Scorn can't really do that, but that the Scorn can tether you. That's just as bad. So I've never been a fan of that. Never been a fan of that. And the take can do it. You know, I remember when the Shark Throne first came out, it was like, oh my god. I almost gave up on the, the, the solo the first time I was doing it. Not because I couldn't do the solo, because obviously I've, I've done the solo quite a few times. I nearly gave up on it because of how annoyed I was at the taking. Anytime you were shooting... Uh, anytime you were shooting a Vandal, they just put a bubble over themselves. It was just ridiculous, and you had to keep pushing out further and further. It wasn't until I'd done it maybe a couple of times I realised I could control them a little bit better. I still don't like them, though. So, you can see I managed to get that cap that, that captain down. No, I shouldn't. I won't deal with any more waves of ads. Just move over here. There is, we think there's one more ad up. And there we go. So once you've took all the ads down, the boss is going to come back. We've got our super. I'll just get a manual reload. Wait for the super. You can see the boss. I said that in the wallop run. The boss loves to just get off his mark as soon as as soon as soon he spawns in. Because the tether's on him. I'm, and I've got... There's nothing shielding him. Get the dodge on. I'm just going to keep going until he goes. And then, as per, a hobgoblin comes to ruin the party. just really really annoys me that hobgoblin thing i have i i can't tell you how much it really annoys me so got to, got to take these hobgoblins down and, and get this now you see that was that and i remember that i know i actually do remember that that was really annoying from the point of view of 
the, the the hobgoblin was shielding the the the, the captain, the the taken knight, the boss, but he he didn't show you know the visual wasn't there, so he di he didn't look like he was shielded. So I wasted I wasted I wasted ammunition. These goblins, as I say, they're they're, they're worse than the worse than uh, I would take I would take the void shielded acolytes over the goblins. See, that's just just keeps happening. They just and and it's it's how fast they change their their tether as well. It's like oh no, well, well no, we'll shield this guy over here. And there's just one hiding. Trying to hit him with a grenade. Completely missed. I can't go out because there he is. He managed. I managed to get him because he showed himself. And now I'll take this goblin. Now, Mr. Bossman. As soon as you show yourself, you are going down. Or I'm going to make you go away. So I'll just push up. There is another goblin. There we go, two shots. That was all he needed to go. And now, literally all we've got to do now is clear the rest of these ads. Now, as you can see, I don't have very much uh, heavy. So I've, I'm going to actually have to try and farm some heavy before I can take down the knights. Now, at first I thought I wasn't going to get much heavy, but I think I start dropping bricks now. So I decided to run around the outside and just go over here because I, I knew I had a brick of heavy and it turned out I had two and then just try and clear a little bit of a path back to my rock I've got my, my dodge if I need it and then we're back with enough heavy to be able to take the two, two captains we've got enough heavy now to be able to take the two captains uh, and the boss. So what's going to happen is, once we get to that point, which is, as I say, as, I, as I've already said, uh, and if you watch the Warlock run, it's a little bit, you know, arduous. It's a little bit more arduous than the Warlock run. That is, that's, listen, I don't normally blow my own whistle, but I, I was so, it was one of those moments when I hit that grenade where I was like, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, well, that's God tier. And then I was like, it's just a grenade. What are you on about? <laughs> God tier. I am a God tier grenade thrower. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm taking the mickey out of myself, to be fair. So, uh, it's kind of like when you hit a jump shop or on, on no scope in patrol. You're like, oh, and then you realize it's just against the <laughs> thrall or something. Uh, so, again... All we're trying to do here is clear these two captains. That they, they are the most important uh, thing at the moment. That's the two captains gone. Now, now what we can do is we can just whittle away the ads. You know, and I felt like I thought both captains were down at this point. Uh, and maybe they are. Maybe, are they? I did take the right one out as well. <laughs> Whoops. So now that both captains are there, <laughs> uh, this is, as I say, as long as there's goblins up, you're going to have problems. Uh, literally just, just clearing out the ads that are here and trying to keep yourself safe. Goblins, yay. And then once, once we get to that point, I'm actually, I think I'm going to attack the boss from up where I'm shooting now, on that ridge above where I'm shooting, shooting now. Uh, so I'm just going to move over here, make sure there's no ads over here. And, and this is a nice little base, and you, you can see it's like an opposite effect. If there's no taking up here, then you don't get as many of those little uh, bloopy uh, taking bloop things. Now the champions, now the boss is here, we're just going to tether on the ground, which grabs him for a grenade drop down so I avoid his solar and then just finish him off and that is the the hunter room 
a little bit different from the Warlock, a little bit longer. Uh, but uh, there's proof that the, the strategy that worked with the Warlock works with every character. I will put the Titan run up. That'll probably be tomorrow. I just wanted to get another run up. Somebody actually requested the Hunter run. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helps you get your solo. If you can collate what, you've, what I've said in this video and the Warlock video, you'll get it. You will get it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Good luck with your own runs, and I will see you guys in the next video.